We have learned that God is worthy to it. Yeah, God will put you down, trust me. He'll put you down real quick. And until I let God, literally let God put me down because I kept keeping it in my own hands and, and begging and pleading God every day like the woman with the judge. See, I'm going to keep calling me the preacher tonight. Like, that woman with the judge, she just kept aggravating that judge and aggravating that judge till she got what she wanted. Well, I was just going to keep aggravating God and aggravating God. I figured after a while, he's going to get tired of hearing me begging. And instead, what he done was slap me in the face and put me on the floor in the ground. And let me tell you, Sister Wally, when you get down to God's level, then he can open up your eyes and let you see what he can do. Amen. And there's a lot today that God needs to slap down with his leg. And I'm just going to tell you, I am the kind of man I would pray that, Lord, you take every ounce of sleep from them eyeballs. I don't care. Every time they put a pill up to their nose or a needle to their arm, you make them so sick they can't even stand straight up. Every time they put a bottle to their lips, make them so sick they puke their brains out. Do whatever it takes to get their attention to let them know that you are God and you are God alone. And let them know that if you don't turn your life around, you are going to a place called hell. Church, hell is real. Hell is real. And it ain't going to take, there, there will be no sin whatsoever gets into the kingdom of God. None. None. And if we don't get things right now, we may not have a chance later down the road. And I'm going to tell you right now, I know for a fact the devil will tell you, well, i got to quit doing this before I can come and serve the Lord. You better quit letting the devil tell you that lie and quit telling your lie that said yourself and tell the devil, no, I'm going to go to God and let God help me do that. That's what the devil will do. He'll tell you all the time, well, you got to get rid of that before you can serve the Lord. i got to get rid of my girlfriend that I'm living with. i got to get rid of my boyfriend I'm living with before I can serve you. You tell the devil he's a liar. I'm going to serve you and you're going to get rid of everything or fix it one. Listen, I can hit a whole lot of subjects right now, but I, I'm going to try not to. But the truth is the truth. The Bible says we've got to be holy even as he is holy. We have to do what does say the word of God. And listen, if you question it and you don't understand it, pray about it. You can ask us and we can help you understand with what we understand. But there may be something you ask me that I don't even understand. That's when you're going to have to go to the Lord. Who's the, who's the one that can give you all that understanding? But that's what's wrong with a lot of the world right now. They don't want the understanding of the word because when they get the understanding, they know they got to straighten up. That's the truth right there. They get that understanding and that wisdom of God's word, then they know they got to straighten up. And listen, I tell my kids all the time, there ain't nothing out here in this world worth dying and losing your soul for. Nothing. Or nobody. If your girlfriend don't believe in Jesus, you better try to you better try to find you one that does, because I'm telling you, you better be serving him regardless. And you can't run to the house of God just because your girlfriend does. you got to do it because you want to. Amen. We've got to do this thing because it's in us. It's in us. And we're giving it to the Lord, and he's going to take care of it, and he ain't going to let you worry about it no more. Ain't that right? I believe it's already took care of. I'll agree with you right now. Hallelujah. Look, I've known Sister Clary all my life, I'm telling y'all. All my life, as long back as I can ever remember. I can remember her and Alhead, they used to come to church. And, and Alhead, would, Darlene's dad, would sit in the back of the church. And the whole church service, he would sit there and tears would just stream down his face. This man. And they used to live up on this mountain. The road was this big. And 
and they was big old coal trucks that you had to pass. I don't know how many times my mom about to took us over the mountain trying to let one of the coal trucks pass us. <laughs> I remember. Way up on that mountain. I'm more I'd say my mom, she used to get so upset at my dad because he would have her driving some of the awfulest roads ever in the world just so he could go to people's houses and have church. <laughs> but I it, it's it's paid off because look look what the Lord has done. It's my mom's faithful service to the Lord that has kept her. Now listen, my mom's mind is pretty much gone except for Jesus. And she always prayed and she always asked. That was my one. You know, I had a problem with that for a little while because I thought, Lord, now this woman has served you my whole life. I'm almost 48 years old. And the one thing that I have ever asked her to I have known her to ask you faithfully was that you keep her in a sound mind and you haven't done that. But one night sitting back there and the power got it all over her, he reminded me, oh yes I have. She still has a sound mind to serve me. And you know what? As long as she's got a sound mind to serve God, she's got a sound mind. And that's the most important. And he's gave her that. Morning, Rachel, somebody y'all come on over here to the